Hey everybody, it's Wilbit! We're playing Ace Attorney Investigations 2, Prosecutor's Path, and uh, we are already in the courtroom, where at last we see Judge Courtney being a judge and not just getting mad at us and threatening us with a hammer. Court is now in session. Is the defense ready? Of course, Your Honor. We can begin whenever you want. The prosecution has been ready from the start, Your Honor. Jill Crane, the attorney in charge of the defense, has passed on from this world. Furthermore, Sebastian De Best, the prosecutor in charge, has disappeared. Really? Sebastian is... gone? When did that happen? I know he ran away, right? And so, Francisca and Mr. Shields have taken over their duties. Before we begin, I would like to apologize for the delay of today's trial. As the crime took place in the prison, a place where justice is normally administered, and the defendant was the warden of the prison, further exacerbating the situation. Additional time was specially arranged to investigate and prepare for the trial. In addition, the defense attorney in charge of the case, Jill Crane, has recently passed away. You know, been murdered, but sure, we'll use polite euphemisms. Due to these circumstances, the trial was further delayed. Mr. Shields, Ms. Von Karma, at this time I'd like to give you my gratitude for taking up this responsibility on short notice. I guess this is the last job Courtney Pie's friend left behind for us, huh? Well, Uncle Ray's more than happy to help out. <laughs> Before we start, uh, everybody in the hug does a conventional hug, right? In the court, just get together. Although, having said that, I only had enough time to skim through the case files, and, um, you know, typical for a defense attorney, apparently. Are you okay on your end for any pie? What kind of prosecutor abandons his own case and vanishes without a trace? I won't allow any more delays in this trial while we wait for that foolish man to return. I have received the evidence just now. There should be no problem continuing the trial. You have my thanks. And with that, I hereby call the defendant, Patricia Rowland, to the stand. Oh! It's this trial! I had forgotten who Patricia Rowland was, but... Now then, will the prosecution please give us their opening statement? Very well, your honor, the defendant. Please, let your honor. What is it? Well, there's something I'd like you to fill me in on. Just what exactly am I doing in a place like this? Did you get amnesia too? Did somebody push you off a building or something? Then perhaps you would do well to listen to the opening statement. Hmm. So if I listen to it, I'll get it to her? Okay, then let us hear it. That was the plan from the start! Now if you would kindly shut up and listen! The incident occurred in the detention center and the prison warden Roland is in charge of. The victim is Horace Knightley, who was being held in the detention center. Hm. The prosecution is certain that this woman here is the culprit. This knife, the murder weapon, is the decisive e Huh? Miss Von Karma, is something wrong? That's impossible! The evidence is... Uh, what's wrong with the evidence, Franny Pie? Huh? Hmm? Huh? The evidence... The knife's gone! The chisel with dog and bell attached to it is missing too! What? What? I mean, that... I guess that makes my job easier, because I'm defending someone who's very clearly guilty. Order! Order! Prosecutor Von Karma, what is the meaning of this? I... I don't understand it either, Your Honor. If there is no evidence, then I suppose there's not much reason for me to be here. Hmm? Oh, hmm? I guess I simply go now. Some prosecutor can't even hold on to one little piece of evidence. What a dunce. I... I only received everything that the previous prosecutor had. 
It appears the culprit is that pampered prosecutor, the boy Blunder. Uh, hey, Courtney Pie. What is it? Your Honor, uh, considering our predicament, what say we postpone the trial until later? Overruled! The defense's proposal is overruled. Um, Courtney Pie. I know, right? It can be troubling for me if this trial were to be delayed any further. I just want everyone to know that I'm innocent as soon as possible. Objection! Innocent? I've had more than enough of your foolish! And besides, you don't have any evidence, right? I recall a certain saying, in God evidence is everything, wasn't it? Since there's no evidence, that would make me innocent. Isn't that right, your honor? <sighs> that is correct. <laughs> what? Um... I mean, I like winning, but this feels dirty. The prosecution has not produced sufficient evidence to prove the defendant guilty. As such, I hereby find the defendant, Patricia Rowland. Objection! Hold your horses, Courtney Pie. You can't just declare it isn't all of a sudden. Is something the matter? For the defense to object to a not guilty verdict. Well, I mean, even you must know that the warden over there is guilty, right? You were there with us when we found the murder weapon. You are a bad defense attorney. At least pretend. Mr. Shields, a judge must remain impartial when handing down a verdict. That is why I cannot allow myself to get caught up in my own personal feelings. Then recuse yourself and don't be a crazy person and then testify as a witness because that's a type of evidence. The person who was present when the murder weapon was discovered and the judge sitting before you now are two completely different people. Me boop, I am the robot. Yes, yes me. Uh, you're kidding, right? I can only hand down a verdict based on the evidence that was presented. Objection! There is evidence just... Well, it's not here right now, but... A few minutes, that's all I need. I'll find the evidence and return to court without fail. The prosecution requests a brief recess, your honor. Uh, the, the defense would also like a recess, your honor. Um, you know, just relax. Everybody calm down. Have a good time. Courtney Pie, please. I understand. I shall grant your request. Well, Justine, darling, aren't you wishy washy today? This court will now adjourn for a 15 minute recess, during which the prosecution and the defense shall prepare for the resumption of the trial. Understood, Your Honor. A uh, few. That was a close one. Court is now adjourned. We got so close to having a court sequence. So close. Maybe we still will. Did we find it together? The evidence. Yes, we certainly did. Huh? What's the matter, detective? Hey, it looks like the metal detector is reacting to this alligator. Really? Why? Of course, that's why the metal detector reacted. Judge Courtney, I'd like you to take a look at this. The chisel? Wasn't that just the fake murder weapon? Dogen hid this chisel inside his dog's mouth. And the real murder weapon was hidden in very much the same way. The real murder weapon is in the pond, inside the alligator. I wonder if it was stolen by someone... Mr. Edgeworth! Oh, this the circus people. Miss Barry and Mr. Keyes, did you come to attend the trial? I came because I heard there's a really fun show around here. So, where is it? Uh, the trial for the case I got caught up in it was supposed to have already started, but uh, our practice ran a little late. I believe it was somewhere around here, wasn't it? 
actually took a piece of evidence and gone missing. The chisel and the knife. The trial is in recess now. Sort of like an intermission. You just missed it, Simon. What? What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Looks like Simon's gonna get arrested again. <laughs> Eek. No, way, no way, no way, no way, I can't. Hmm, I guess Simon is his usual noisy self. Huh? You think that I would be humiliated like this? <laughs> Somebody's getting whipped over there. And here comes another noisy individual. I wonder who it could be. Who could possibly be making whip noises coming down the hall? Now, now, Freddy Pie, let's just take a moment and calm down a bit. Maybe you could put that whip of yours away. Hmm? What do you say? I mean, you know, could be exciting, but maybe later. Maybe in privacy at another time. Use with discretion with a safe word. Such foolish prosecutor! Then I get my hands on him? <laughs> my deepest contact gave him the thrashing of a lifetime! Eee! <laughs> Mouse, uh, oh, why don't you try talking to her? She seems to kind of like you sometimes, hmm? Oh, grief. On that note, I guess I should probably hear what she has to say. Um, there, this room's crowded already. Okay, um, hi, Francisco. What's up? Oh, if it isn't Farmer, Prosecutor, Miles Edress, I just need to rub that in every time we meet. I just rub it right in. Uh, Francisca. So also have abandoned the path of a prosecutor. Do not belong here. Now be a good boy and go home. Figure out what you want to do with your life. Do something else. Maybe you start to collect something. Maybe you play video games on the internet. Huh? Don't be mean to me, Franny. I'm very sensitive right now. Still, what are you going to do, Francisca? The recess is only 15 minutes, and I'm wasting a lot of those minutes talking to you right now, and I don't have the evidence. Just to tell you in advance. Ugh, you're always so calm and collected. Like an anchorman reading off a teleprompter. Oh, everything's bad. Everyone's going to die. Oh, yes, yes. Bombs are headed towards you right now. Don't worry. It makes me sick! I should probably stay classy and avoid a confrontation with her for now. I'll be able to, you know, taunt her later. Francisca, I never expected you to end up taking over the prosecution for this case. The bodyguard of the president of Sank Fa, Horace Knightley, was murdered. The defendant is the former warden of the prison, Patricia Rowland. The knife she used as a murder weapon had been prepared as evidence. However, the murder weapon has disappeared without a trace. Not only did he abandon his own case, but he also made me look like a fool in court! <laughs> the next time I see that foolish fool of a prosecutor, I'll whip some backbone into him. I don't mind if you whip some backbone into him, but stop whipping innocent bystanders. And especially me, I've got enough backbone. I don't need any more, I would have like a freakishly long back. It'd be weird. Um, okay, well, I don't have any evidence, so, um, Ray, what do you got going on, buddy? Okay, looks like you got your memories back. Yeah, I'm all better now. Uncle Ray was really worried, you know. Though that other K was also pretty cute, because it was you, and I'm trying to give you a compliment, and I'm already being awkward. Well then, now that you've recovered, uh, how about a hug for old time's sake? Nope! I'm never going to hug you. I'm going to hug literally everyone else in the room and not you. Just because you're weird, man. You need to focus on the trial right now. Yeah, yeah, things aren't looking good. Well, guess I win by default. Hope I still get paid, because I didn't do anything. At any rate, we'll have to search for the evidence. But we can't interrupt the trial. Mm, Uncle Ray's in a pickle. If only there was someone who could find the evidence for us. That look, of, that look of expectation on your face says it all. If only there was someone in the lobby with a frilly cravat 
who can find everything for you and make sure you never have to do any work. Is that what you want, Ray? Fine, I'll do it. Miles, you still don't have your prosecutor's badge, right? Do you finally feel like following in your father's footsteps? <laughs> I simply left it in someone else's care. I wasn't stripped of my badge. Furthermore, right now I am unable to follow in my father's footsteps. I see. Well, there's no need to rush your decision. Take all the time you need to determine the path you want to follow. In any case, the door is always open for you at Edgeworth Law Offices. Literally, your name's on it. You can just walk in and, you know, we will let you in. But it's a shield. If only there was someone who could go search for the evidence for us. <coughs> 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 Pardon me. <clears throat> it's gonna be a fun one tonight. Oh boy. <clears throat> Very well, I'll go look for them. Oh, Miles, you do that for us? Of course, finding the evidence within 15 minutes would be no easy task, seeing as how we've already spent. Uh, at least ten minutes talking here. Well, if worst comes to worst, Uncle Ray and Franny Pie will help you stall for time. That's the explanation. Until you recover the evidence, we won't let a hand down a verdict. Please do so. Francisca, are you okay with this? You're asking me, Francisca von Karma, to help you out? No, no, I'm asking you to help me help you out. You'd be better off spending the rest of your life as an anchorman for the local news. Ms. Van Kama, this is an emergency. We could really use your cooperation. I understand. As acting prosecutor, I, along with that attorney over there, shall continue this trial. Meanwhile, you, the former prosecutor, shall run around and look for evidence. All for my sake. It's a job that suits you perfectly. I'm glad that you're on board. Uh, I'll go about you, because I really don't want to get arrested again. This sounds like fun, but when Gina wants to tag along too. Alright, that would be helpful. Now then, where should we begin? I think we should go find that person and hear what they have to say. Who should we talk to in order to learn where the evidence went? Um, who do we talk to? I guess probably we would want to find the best because he was the previous prosecutor, so he would be the last person to have seen it, right? Take that! Yes, the person in charge of the evidence was Sebastian De Best. Oh, you mean that rookie prosecutor, right? <laughs> Got it. I'll leave him to you. Alrighty, time for Uncle Ray to have a strategy meeting with the uh, opposing counsel. Just the two of us. Ah! Miles Edgeverse, you better not keep me waiting, lest you end up like your friend here. Yes, I'll keep that in mind. Okay, I guess I missed the opportunity to talk to the circus people, because talking to two people progressed the story. Freddy Pie, wait for me! Uh, that's fine, we'll just look for the evidence. Now then, let's go help look for Sebastian as well. Oh. Judge Courtney. Ah! Judge Courtney. If it isn't Prosecutor Edgeworth, I hope that all is well. All is not well! Just what was going on in that trial earlier? Okay, there's no need for that. But, even though Miss Courtney... Even though Miss Courtney should know exactly who the copper is, what made you... Oh. In the court of law, the only thing that truly matters is evidence. Whatever my own feelings may be, it should not affect the verdict. So is this the judge persona of Justine Courtney was seen? Cold-blooded and heartless. It's fine if you think of me as such. There's a judge, she's still this stubborn. Judge Courtney, there's just one thing I'd like to ask you. What would that be? 
two nights ago. Are you into the roof of the Grand Tower? The roof, you say? You met with the president there, correct? The two of you were caught on the security camera. Is there some sort of problem with that? Today, the president's body was discovered very close to the Grand Tower. That's... You understand now, don't you? You're a suspect. What happened between you and the president up on the roof? Nothing. We merely spoke for a few minutes. Once our business was done, I headed straight home. I took the elevator back down alone. Indeed, that was shown on the security camera footage as well. What exactly did you and the president talk about? That... I cannot say. I see. However, I cannot afford to let up just yet. That being the case, I guess my only remaining option is to use that. She's definitely hiding something. And I'm going to draw it out of her using chests. Let's take on the queen. The toughest chess piece there is. Judge Chess. Two nights ago, Judge Courtney met with President Huang. Doesn't have a queen piece. That's fine. Is it true that I spoke with President? It is true that I spoke with President Huang on the roof of the Grand Tower. However, we only discussed business. There's no need to tell you what was said. Hmm. Just like in the trial earlier, she won't reveal her personal feelings easily. When she's speaking as a judge, it would be better for me to wait and see what develops. Now then, I'll start by asking her what she talked about with the president. Begin logic chess. Okay, only one question. Could you tell me what she and the president talked about? My meeting with the president was strictly business. And since it has nothing to do with you, I am not obligated to answer your question. I appreciate your understanding. Even so, you certainly are a very busy person, aren't you? You are a member of the PIC, and a judge as well. You even assist with the investigations. I am simply fulfilling the professional duties that have been assigned to me. Was your meeting with the president also one of the duties assigned to you as a judge? Yes, of course it was. I am one who lives for the law. I would never act outside my professional duties. This morning, you returned Kay's promised notebook to me. I don't believe that all of your actions are simply done for the sake of your duties. It's true, it seems I still retain some immature qualities. I wouldn't call it immature. It was your own personal kindness. Weren't you also distressed when you found out the president had passed away? Yes, it is very unfortunate. Why did he have to die? It seems he was crushed by the head of a monster called the Mighty Muzilla. Ah, uh, excuse me. You see, Muzilla is... Is that true? You mean... The president died at the temporary Muzilla film lot. You know about Muzilla, do you? You a big Muzilla fan? Goes back away? Yes, that's right. I'm surprised that you know about Muzilla. Yes. I had heard about it from Sebastian. He told me that the movie was being filmed near the Grand Tower. She seems awfully shaken up about that. And I'm also curious about Sebastian, who went missing along with the evidence. She said she wouldn't talk about the president. However, I might be able to get her to reveal her secret through another line of questioning. She's flustered beyond normal. There must be some reason behind it. <clears throat> Francisca may have taken over this prosecution in Sebastian's place. However, as long as he still possesses some of the evidence, the trial cannot proceed. I intend to carry out a fair trial. 
if the prosecution is unable to present evidence, the defendant must be declared not guilty. I am a judge. I cannot allow my own personal feelings to get in the way. So you're saying you're not the least bit worried about Sebastian's whereabouts? Of course I am. I'm worried about Sebastian as well, but... You're worried about Sebastian as well? Wouldn't that mean that there's someone else you're worried about? Ah! By any chance, would that person have something to do with your unnatural behavior? That's impossible. I... I'm a follower of the law. I will not be swayed by personal feelings. It may be true that those who stand in court have a duty to follow the law. However, we're not superheroes. You and I are only human. It is impossible to completely ignore your own feelings and render an impartial judgment. Ah. It is as you say. As I am now, I cannot hand down an impartial verdict. Judge Courtney, why don't you tell me the truth? I... I... Just what am I supposed to do? For Judge Courtney to become this distraught, I should find out exactly who she is searching for. So far so good! Now, but now she has been wearing the mask of a judge. This time, I should be able to draw out her true feelings. Um... Okay. Judge Courtney, tell me who you are searching for. She's not going to do that straight away. My lips are sealed. That is something I cannot, I can't talk about right now. I don't have enough clues to proceed with this line of questioning. That's fine, we'll come back. Maybe I should try another line of attack. I like Mozilla, but we're gonna go for the easy one. Professor DeBest, Prosecutor DeBest. Professor DeBest, <laughs> Is the person you're searching for Sebastian by any chance? Sebastian learned of his father's true colors. He went into hiding of his own true will. I'm worried about him, but this may be a trial he needs to overcome on his own. We'll wait and see. Both of those were just kind of mean. Since he went into hiding of his own accord, he could return whenever he wanted to. Could it be the person you're searching for is unable to return under their own power. In regards to that, my lips are sealed. I'm unable to talk about it right now. When I think about what might happen to that child if I talked. That child? Could you tell me who you are referring to? She's not talking about Sebastian. It, it's nothing. Please, pay no mind. Judge Courtney's expression has changed. It seems like I've managed to uncover a clue. Um, we're gonna go back to this one. Judge Courtney, tell me who you are searching for. Yeah, let's use the clue. A missing child? Could it be you're searching for that child who has gone missing? Ah! Since you said it was a child, I presume they're of a young age, correct? I simply cannot answer any questions about him. That boy has nothing to do with you or the president's assassination. I don't have enough clues. Ah, uh, okay. We need to go to the Mozilla one and come back. All right. Are you searching for the mighty Mozilla? I don't have the time to play along with your jokes right now. It's not a joke. Just a moment ago, you were surprised to learn that the president had been crushed by Muzilla, correct? That was... I was simply surprised by the president's cause of death. It's shocking to think that he passed away at the temporary film lot, of all places. What's wrong with where he died? From the way you're talking, it seems you have a problem with where he died. 
Yeah, that's not true. It's just for the president to have passed away at a film lot, a place where dreams are made. I just thought it would be better if the movie's cast and crew remained unaware of the truth. They already know. I'm the, so it won't affect the box office? I'm very sorry to say this. However, the movie's cast and crew are already aware of the president's death. I encountered a female staff member and John Marsh at the crime scene. No! Ah, how could it have come to this? Hmm. She seems to react strongly when it comes to the staff of the Mozilla film. I'm guessing that child is John Marsh. <clears throat> this could be a useful clue. All right, back to the top. Lips are sealed, we use the clue. Could it be the child? Yes, it is. <clears throat> Further clues. Since you said it was a child, I presume they're of a young age, correct? I simply can't answer any questions about him. That boy has nothing to do with you or the president's assassination. Let me try using that other clue. Earlier, when Mozilla was brought up, it seemed to be a sensitive topic for you. Is that child you spoke of involved with the Mozilla movie? Ah! How? How do you know that? You're usually so calm, yet you seem rather distraught right now. Please tell me, who is that child? It's John Marsh. I understand. If you've come to know this much, I shall prepare myself for the worst. The child I'm searching for is a boy by the name of John Marsh. D -d -doy. Okay, moving on. John, why do you want to know his whereabouts? Well, that much I simply cannot say. Judge Courtney, didn't you say you were prepared for the worst? Even if you don't intend to talk, I am determined to expose the truth. That is my resolve. Yum, 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 yum. Nice chunk. Why is she searching for John? I must get her to tell me the reason. Um. Actually, we are searching for John as well. Would you happen to have any idea where he might be? Why would you think that I would know where he is? John and I, there's no connection between us. All right, we need a clue. There's no connection, huh? But are you acquainted? Are you acquainted with John by any chance? He's a famous movie star. Kind of. I doubt there is anyone who doesn't know who he is. Isn't this his first film as the star, though? I actually hadn't heard of him until I met with him today. That proves you have much to learn. Allow me to give you a lesson. Ah! I know everything about him! Wait and see. Those are both just mean again. My apologies. I seem to have lost my composure. You didn't lose your calm whenever the conversation turned to John, don't you? Um, in any case, while I may know everything about John, it is a one-sided relationship. I don't have enough clues. Uh, we need a clue. Okay, alright, okay. So close. Alright, bottom question. You a fan? You a big fan? Could it be that you are a fan of John Marsh? Oh, yes, oh, yes. That's right. I am a fan of John Marsh, the famous child actor who has been called a prodigy. Um. We'll wait and see. I knew his movie was being filmed in front of the Grand Tower. So the temporary film lot had been on my mind. I see. I suppose a fan would be curious about that. Did you know that John was at the temporary film lot? Oh, yes, of course I did. He said they would be filming there all day today, and yet... It almost sounds as if John himself told you personally. I doubt he would give his schedule to a mere fan. That's true. 
isn't it? Please don't pay any mind to that statement. <laughs> she made another slip of the tongue. She must be really worried about John. So she has spoken with John. This could be a useful clue. Okay. We'll try this one again. He's a famous movie star. This might be the wrong one. Gotta figure out where to plug in the clue. Wait and see. Let me try using that clue. Okay, yeah, it's a one-sided relationship, but you've spoken with him. Oh, bringing out the rook. I understand you're worried about him, but aren't you a bit too flustered? You told me earlier that you had spoken with John. Doesn't that prove that you are indeed acquainted with him? Could I have committed such an indiscretion? It appears that John and Judge Courtney are acquaintances. This could be a vital clue. That's all we- okay. Just had to get that to go in the next one. Actually, we're searching for John as well. We know you're acquainted. I don't know- The King! I don't know what kind of relationship you have with John. But at the very least, two of you must be acquaintances. Judge Courtney, won't you allow us to help you in your search for him? Help? No, that won't be allowed. Who won't allow it? The so-called goddess of law? The person who knows where that child is. This recess is not very long. Oh, okay, that was passive. All right, okay. <laughs> Hold on, please. It seems I waited a little too long. Okay. Okay, I think he's been kidnapped. Where is he right now? The paparazzi doesn't make sense, because they're annoying, but not really a big deal. So you must be acquainted. Who won't allow it? It's not that she won't allow it, it's that the kidnapper won't allow it. With a pawn. I see. Finally, I've connected all the pieces of the puzzle. The reason why you cannot easily talk about John. It was because someone kidnapped him. Isn't that right? <laughs> Judge Courtney, I would like to hear the truth from your own lips. I understand. This time... I will truly be prepared for the worst. He's just as you deduced. Someone has kidnapped John. As I thought. There was a kidnapping. Still, how is John's kidnapping related to you in any way? John and I are... Related? Mother and child! Ah! I was gonna guess that! Oh! What? It's your baby! Your baby's a movie star and he got kidnapped! I was unable to learn much about the conversation she had with the president, but uh, I've learned of John's kidnapping. It was an unexpected result, but with that, uh, it's checkmate. I'll count it as a win! Logic chess complete! I'm guessing we're gonna have at least one more of those at some point. What? J John is Miss Courtney's son? Why isn't his name John Courtney? No way! I mean, he's already so big for him to be your... Yes. John is indeed my son. Please, look at this. This is a clipping from a magazine. It's an article about John. D do you always carry this around with you? Yes. I always keep it close by. It's like a charm to me. It seems the bond they share is a strong one. However, are you absolutely certain that he's been kidnapped? Yes. 
I received a call from the kidnapper just before the trial started. What were the demands? They had only one demand. A not guilty verdict for Patricia Rowland. I see. So that's what happened. Since there's no evidence, that would make me innocent. Is that right, your honor? That is correct. You're the opposite of impartial. You're super partial. They, they got to you. The prosecution has not produced sufficient evidence to prove the defendant guilty. You couldn't even put on a farce trial. As such, I hereby find the defendant, Patricia Rowland. So that's what you were going to deliver. Why you were going to deliver a not guilty verdict earlier. I am not qualified to be a judge. You just recuse yourself and step back, and then they can't do anything to you. Or at least they have to kidnap somebody else's son. They could kidnap Judge Judge's son, and he wouldn't know, because he's senile, and he'd just be like, Well, I don't know what that means, but I mean, sure, fine. A judge must be able to remain impartial and composed, above all else. Well, impartial. Maybe not composed. It's okay if you're crazy, so long as you're impartial. And yet, despite this, in the trial just now, I... I was about to hand down a verdict that was led solely by my heart. Judge Courtney, the goddess of law must be furious with me. But I simply couldn't do it. I couldn't hand down a fair verdict. If it meant I had to sacrifice my own son. Of course you can't! Okay. A real parent would never abandon their own child! If that makes the goddess a law angry, then maybe it's the goddess is the one who's wrong! The goddess is guilty! GUILTY! Isn't that right, Mr. Edward? Let's throw the goddess of law into jail! Indeed. To declare a goddess guilty, well... Responsible for upholding the law. But at the same time, we're only human. Nobody would hand down a verdict that would sacrifice their own child. Thank you very much, Miss Faraday, Prosecutor Edgeworth. However, I cannot simply run away from the courtroom. You could. Not the best option, but you can do it. Uh, Judge Courtney, so this is where you've been. Uh, this is a 15 minute recess, and you've been out here for about 45 minutes. Uh, that's a bit much. It appears it's time. Miss Courtney! My father. He was a prosecutor. Your father? Yeah. He stood in court just like you. And now, with all that has happened, it got me thinking. What if my father had been in the same position as you are now? If a prosecutor was being coerced into obtaining a guilty verdict, I know if my life were on the line, my father would definitely come to steal me back! Steal you! Miss Courtney, why don't you let us take care of it? What? I'm gonna go steal John back for you! As the second Yadagarasu, I can Faraday give you my word! <laughs> so, the great thief Yadagarasu plans to steal the truth, huh? What say you, Judge Courtney? Will you place your trust in our young great thief? Prosecutor Edgeworth. And if it's all right with you, I wish to help as well. I'm getting a bit of a criminal element myself. Thank you very much. I know that it's really not my place to ask this of you. But please, do whatever you can. Please save John. You got it! Just leave everything to us! Allow me to leave myself out with you. You may get a call from the kidnapper at some point. You have my word. I will ensure the safe return of your phone along with your son. Um, after I arrive, through all your pictures and your email. These are all boring. And I will do everything in my power to prolong the trial. But, even 
opinion, at most the trial can only last for about two more hours. Two hours, huh? Hmm, so, until 2 p.m. That's our time frame. I must return to court. Miss Faraday, Prosecutor Edgeworth. I shall leave the rest to you. Heh, <laughs> Kay, I thought you were taking a break from being the great thief. As of right now, the great thief Viaragarasu is back in business! Alright, time to put on the gloves and hit the pavement! It's my first request after all. Don't get a commission very often, usually I just steal what I want to. Which is so far nothing. Is that so? In that case, we better begin our investigation post haste. If we hope to track down John. Where'd he run off to? He might have just gone back home. That's right! I mean, it doesn't look like they're gonna get any filming done today! Or he may have run away. We should probably begin our investigation from the front of the Grand Tower. <laughs> hey, hold on, Mr. Edgeworth! You're not the one in charge anymore! I'm it's thiefy time! From here on out, this is a job for a great thief! Which means I'm the leader now, you're my assistant, okay? Unless you learned how to pick some locks or something in your spare time. If that's the case, then what am I supposed to do? Mr. Edgeworth, you'll get to be the first ever Great Thief's Assistant! So I'm a Thief's Assistant now. Alright, let's get going! The Great Thief Yadagarasu takes flight once again!